It doesn't matter where you are with your credit, these are three of the best tips you can use in 2020 to improve your credit score. Stay tuned. All right, so my name is Austin Hartley, as I'm sure you just saw from the intro. Yes, I am another dude standing in front of a whiteboard teaching you how to increase your credit. Pardon my smoke alarm over there, it's been going off, I can't reach it to replace the batteries. It's high ceilings. But anyway, let's jump right into this. So number one, we're going to talk about balance transfers and I'm going to run through a quick example with you. So let's boil it down to a science. If you're trying to improve your credit score, if you're watching this video, that's most likely because you have a lot of debt. You probably went through a tough financial time, maybe you lost your job, lost your house, I don't know, something happened, divorce, anything, okay? Put the bad situation aside, let's focus on moving forward in 2020 to improve your credit. The problem with increasing your score is that you need to pay off your debt in order to increase your score, but paying off debt means you have to have capital, you have to have cash. The majority of people don't have, you know, five, six to ten thousand dollars just sitting aside to pay off their debt or else, you know, they really wouldn't be watching this video in the first place. So how do we play with the system, the whole credit system, to be able to take advantage of this and increase your score as much as you can without utilizing a lot of cash or little uh, at all? So number one is gonna be balance transfer. So let's paint our gentleman Joe over here. So Joe, right here, give him a little smile face, has uh, 10,000 uh, in, in credit card debt. He has three different cards and two of those cards are maxed out with that $10,000 in credit card debt. Um, now with that credit card debt, you know that there's gonna be an annual percentage rate. It's probably gonna be through the roof, like almost 25% most likely. And this gentleman has a credit score, of, let's just say 650. Okay, so how does he shoot his score over 700? Well, the easiest way of doing this that I'm looking at it, if he has three separate cards, is to take a portion of the balance of either one or both of the cards that have a balance, B for balance right there, and transfer it to the one that has a lower balance or no balance at all. Now you need to be careful when you do this because your utilization rate matters. And there's two different ways that it can be viewed. If you have a total availability on each card of let's just say 5,000, 5,000, and 5,000 to keep it simple, then you can play with I don't know, let's just say 1,500 and 1,500 out of these cards and roll it into this 5,000 limit. So that way you're not maxing out two cards and you have free up debt in another card. You're playing with the utilization rate to lower it overall. Now it can also be viewed from the perspective of this guy has 10,000 out of $15,000 in debt. But what you're doing when you have your cards maxed out and it's reporting out every single month when you're making your payments to the credit bureaus as maxed out, you're making it look bad. So, you know, the whole saying of like, don't max out your cards, keep it under 30%. It's not necessarily hardcore, like you have to do that. The whole point of them saying that, that saying, is so that you don't have it reported out over 30%. So it's okay if you go up to you know 50% or more if you have a really big purchase as long as you wait till it reflects and pay that off immediately before the statement cuts. When the statement cuts, it gets reported out to the credit bureau. This is a quick example of how Joe can increase his credit score to very close to a 700 by just freeing up and playing around with some money. Now I know what you're thinking, there is a balance transfer fee, but we're focusing on improving your credit and Really, honestly, I mean, you could use this example. Maybe this gentleman, Joe, this happy stick figure right here with a 650 score, wanted to get approved for an auto loan. He wanted to go apply for a mortgage. This is an easy way to play around with debt, to shoot up his score, to get closer to a 700, so that maybe you can rank into the next tier. Now, before we jump into tip number two, there's one thing I forgot to say, is that if you stick around till the end of this video, I'm gonna be sharing one of my biggest secrets that's not really a secret anymore because it's on almost all my YouTube videos, but it's a huge tip to improve your credit score, and you can use this no matter if you have a 700, if you have an 800, or if you have a 400, it doesn't matter. It's gonna increase your score and ultimately help you, and I just wanna take the time to say thank you if you're watching this far. My YouTube channel has been growing recently and I really wanna put out quality content. So leave this video a thumbs up if you liked it, leave it a thumbs down if you hate me, and hopefully you would consider subscribing to this channel so that I can put out more content and help everyone increase their credit score and beat the system. But anyways, I'm gonna jump into tip number two over here. This is gonna sound kind of obvious right now, but what I want you to do is mentally set a goal. So whether you have to print this out on a piece of paper, write it on your forehead, whatever you have to do, number two is I want you to stop right there, applying 
for credit. I don't want you to apply for credit anymore, okay? Now, you're probably gonna hate me. Maybe you have some financial goals of buying a house, uh, of doing this, of doing that. Maybe you want a new car, but just stop. You don't need anything right now. The goal of watching this video is to improve your score, okay? And I'm gonna walk you through how you can get through those financial goals without really applying for everything out there. I know it can be tempting, especially when you don't have good credit and you're just sitting around watching YouTube videos or going online, Googling how to improve your credit, and then that little ad pops up from American Express and it just keeps following you around and it's like, apply now, you pre-qualified. They get you, just don't apply. You need to tape it somewhere and picture frame it, put it on every room in your wall. Every time you apply, it lowers your score around three to five points. If you go to a dealership to buy a car, they're gonna be running your credit probably with a minimum of like three to five different financial institutions. So right there, that's a huge hit because it looks bad. Inquiries take two years to fall off and one year to take less of an effect on your credit. My rule of thumb is only apply every six months for something, whether it be a credit line increase or it be a new application, a loan, something of that sort, only if it's a dire need. So what I want you to do is I want you to take out a piece of paper and I want you to write down all your credit, your, your credit lines, things that you can access, not your loans, not your installment plan. I want you to write down your assets, stuff that you can access, okay? And I want you to take a look at all that. I want you to calculate all the debt that you have and I want to calculate all the available credit. And I want you to make a goal for 2020 to get that below 30%. And on top of that, I want you to write the top of the paper, stop applying for credit. I don't want you to apply for anything. Now, if you're gonna say, Austin, I wanna get a new car this year. That's fantastic. Use that, but only apply in July when it's, the, or June when it's the sixth month of the year. I don't want you to make more than one inquiry this year, okay? That's gonna significantly skyrocket up your score. For example, on my credit score, I apply for cars left and right because I switch cars pretty often. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go straight to the bank like you should do. The bank that I know I'm gonna get approved for the loan, no matter the interest rate, I don't even care about that as long as the payment is good. And I'm gonna take the check, the pre-qual letter, to the dealership. I'm gonna buy the car with that bank, with that financial institution that already approved me. And that's only one inquiry instead of 57 inquiries that you know the dealerships are gonna try to do. Don't let them pressure into that. They're not gonna give you a better deal if you use their financer. The only way you're gonna get a better deal is if you pay cash for it. Now step number three is gonna be crazy. <laughs> so what I want you to do, just like I said in step number two, is I want you to list out all your credit cards, whether it's on a piece of paper, pause this video, do whatever you gotta do right now, just list it out really quick. I want you to list who it's from, Bank of America, Capital One, American Express, whoever it is, I want you to write down the balance right now, and I want you to write down the total line of credit. And I want you to separate the ones that have balances from the ones that don't have balances, okay? For example, I have like four or five credit cards, and there's a Discover or Barclays card I think I applied for a little while back that I never used. So one goal that I committed myself to in 2020 that I I want you to do too is I wanted to use that card. Now why would Austin tell you to use that card? It makes no sense. If you want to improve your credit, you probably shouldn't be racking up balances. But no, hear me out for this one. Let's just say, let's use Joe over here. Give him a smile. He has five credit cards, okay? Let's just say he has balances on three of the credit cards. So two are open to use. That means two current cards are not being reported out to the credit bureau with active positive history every single month which is not really holding him back but it's not boosting a score up either so what i want you to do is i want you to be joe and i want you to take all the cards you have open if you have any of this step will only apply if you have open available cards or lines of credit in general and i want you to use ten dollars of that card every single month i want you to take your wife i want you to take your girlfriend out whoever or whatever you're doing, get gas, I don't know, just make $10 or you know some super small purchase with it, and I want you to literally drive straight to the bank or go on your online banking, and I want you to pay off that card the moment you spend it. And I want you to wait until the statement cuts, and then I want you to build up your credit because it's really gonna do it for you at that point. So one other thing you might have to do is write down the statement. You need to know when the statement cuts. When the statement cuts, like I said before, it reports out to the credit bureau. So if you don't know when that is, you need to time your payment correctly. The whole point is you wanna use the card, you wanna accrue a balance, very small balance. Remember I said $10, don't go out to like uh, Texas Day Brazil and rack up like hundreds of dollars and then pay the card off the same day Drive to the bank or do it on your mobile app and then late wait for the statement to cut 
and then repeat the process and do that for 12 months out of 2020. And I promise you that step alone, believe it or not, that step is probably gonna increase your score over the course of the next 12 months in 2020, at least 20 points, at least, because it's two active positive reporting lines going out to the credit bureaus in perfect standing. Do this tip and it's going to increase your credit score, a little bit at least. We're fighting for those points at that at, at this stage in improving our credit, okay? Okay, so I'm about to give you the magical tip that I promised you since the beginning of the video. But before I do that, I just wanna make sure that you thumbed up this video and that you left a comment if you have any questions, that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I think the bribing is done. You probably have done that by now, and if you didn't like me, you didn't do it. But anyway, tip number four, I guess we can call it the magical tip put a star next to it. And I made another video, I'm gonna link it somewhere up here, but this is a huge tip, and I don't think I can say this enough, honestly, is to get a secured loan. What I want you to do is go into your local credit union. The one that around Northern Virginia in the DC metro area where I live is Northwest Federal Credit Union, okay? They have a great program. Figure out a way to get into those credit unions because you wanna keep them to build up your credit. It's all part of the system on my channel that I preach. So, the secured loan concept, very simply laid out. You wanna get a secured loan, for $1,000, $1,000. That means you have to have $1,000 in cash. That's the only cash to it. Other than that, you're not really paying anything else. And I want you to get it for one year, okay? Now here's the positive part of that $1,000 cash that I just told you about. When you put down $1,000 as collateral, you get instant access to the $1,000 that you put. So you're gonna give Northwest Federal Credit Union or whatever bank in your area there is, or credit union preferably, that $1,000, they're gonna give it to you right back in a shape of a loan. Basically what you're doing is you just want them to report it out to the credit bureaus because secured loans or loans, mortgages, anything of that sort are reported out different and viewed and judged differently than lines of credit, HELOCs, credit cards, any of that stuff. And on top of that, this is a one year plan. So by the end of 2020, after you pay that loan off, you're gonna have a fully paid out loan, positively reported out over the course of that 12 months on your credit report, which nobody has. This is paid off in full by you and it's a loan. So that means you have just immediately once you finish that after 2020 ends, an impeccable credit history with that financial institution for get, for paying off a loan. So banks will trust you more, in other words. They're gonna charge you an interest rate, by the way. I don't know what bank you're gonna go with, but if you go with Northwest, I think they charged me when I did this like a 3% interest rate. So seriously, I mean, it's really not that bad. You're paying like $18 to basically boost up your credit if you look at it that way. But anyways, this video has been long enough. I wanna thank you so much if you made it to the end. Click subscribe, like my videos, do all that fun stuff and stick around. Go check out my channel, by the way. I made a ton of new videos recently and um, I'm gonna keep coming out with content in 2020 and I look forward to teaching you more in the future.